numerous bombing runs were launched by the United States aimed at the industrial heart of Germany. Using the high-altitude B-17 and B-24, the raids had to be conducted in daylight for the drops to be accurate. As adequate fighter escort was rarely available, the bombers would fly in tight, box formations, allowing each bomber to provide overlapping machine gun fire for defense. The tight formations made it impossible to evade fire from Luftwaffe fighters, however, and American bomber crew losses were high. One such example was the Schweinfurt Regensburg mission, which resulted in staggering losses of men and equipment. The introduction of the revered P 51 Mustang, which had enough fuel to make a round trip to Germany's heartland, helped to reduce losses later in the war. In mid 1942, the United States Army Air Forces, ASOF, arrived in the UK and carried out a few raids across the English Channel. The ASOF 8th Air Force's B-17 bombers were called the Flying Fortresses because of their heavy defensive armament of 10 to 12 machine guns, and armor plating in vital locations. In part because of their heavier armament and armor, they carried smaller bomb loads than British bombers. With all of this, the ASOF's commanders in Washington, D.C., and in Great Britain adopted the strategy of taking on the Luftwaffe head-on, in larger and larger air raids by mutually defending bombers, flying over Germany, Austria, and France at high altitudes during the daytime. Also, both the U.S. government and its Army Air Force's commanders were reluctant to bomb enemy cities and towns indiscriminately. They claimed that by using the B-17 in the Norden bomb site, the assault should be able to carry out precision bombing on locations vital to the German war machine, factories, naval bases, shipyards, railroad yards, railroad junctions, power plants, steel mills, airfields, etc. In January 1943, at the Casablanca Conference, it was agreed RAF bomber command operations against Germany would be reinforced by the ASOF in a combined operations offensive plan called Operation Point Blank. Chief of the British Air Staff MRAF Sir Charles Portal was put in charge of the strategic direction of both British and American bomber operations. The text of the Casablanca Directive read, Your primary object will be the progressive destruction and dislocation of the German military, industrial and economic system and the undermining of the morale of the German people to a point where their capacity for armed resistance is fatally weakened, at the beginning of the combined strategic bombing offensive on March 4, 1943 669 RAF and 303 ASOF heavy bombers were available. In late 1943, point-blank attacks manifested themselves in the infamous Schweinfurt raids, first and second. Formations of unescorted bombers were no match for German fighters, which inflicted a deadly toll. In despair, the 8th halted air operations over Germany until a long-range fighter could be found in 1944, it proved to be the P-51 Mustang, which had the range to fly to Berlin and back. A soft leaders firmly held to the claim of precision bombing of military targets for much of the war, and dismissed claims they were simply bombing cities. However, the American 8th Air Force received the first H-2X radar sets in December 1943. Within two weeks of the arrival of these first six sets, the 8th Command permitted them to area bomb a city using H-2X and would continue to authorize, on average, about one such attack a week until the end of the war in Europe. In reality, the day bombing was precision bombing only in the sense that most bombs fell somewhere near a specific designated target such as a railway yard. Conventionally, the Air Force is designated as the target area a circle having a radius of 1,000 feet around the aiming point of attack. While accuracy improved during the war, survey studies show that, overall, only about 20% of the bombs aimed at precision targets fell within this target area. In the fall of 1944, only 7% of all bombs dropped by the 8th Air Force hit within 1,000 feet of their aim point. The only offensive ordnance possessed by the ASOF that was guidable, the VB-1 Azan, saw very limited service in Europe and in the CBI theater late in the war. Nevertheless, the sheer tonnage of explosives delivered by day and by night was eventually enough to cause widespread damage, and, 
more importantly from a military point of view, forced Germany to divert resources to counter it. This was to be the real significance of the Allied strategic bombing campaign, resource allocation. To improve a soft fire bombing capabilities a mock-up German village was built and repeatedly burned down. It contained full-scale replicas of German homes. Fire bombing attacks proved successful. In a single 1943 attack on Hamburg about 50,000 civilians were killed and almost the entire city destroyed. With the arrival of the brand new 15th Air Force, based in Italy, Command of the U.S. Air Forces in Europe was consolidated into the United States Strategic Air Forces, USAF. With the addition of the Mustang to its strength, the combined bomber offensive was resumed. Planners targeted the Luftwaffe in an operation known as Big Week, 20 February 25, 1944, and succeeded brilliantly. Losses were so heavy German planners were forced into a hasty dispersal of industry and the day fighter arm never fully recovered. The dismissal of General Ira Eker at the end of 1943 as commander of the 8th Air Force and his replacement by an American aviation legend, Major General Jimmy Doolittle signaled a change in how the American bombing effort went forward over Europe. Doolittle's major influence on the European air war occurred early in the year when he changed the policy requiring escorting fighters to remain with the bombers at all times. With his permission, initially performed with P-38s and P-47s with both previous types being steadily replaced with the long-ranged P-51s as the spring of 1944 wore on, American fighter pilots on bomber defense missions would primarily be flying far ahead of the bomber's combat box formations in air supremacy mode, literally clearing the skies of any Luftwaffe fighter opposition heading towards the target. This strategy fatally disabled the twin engines Erstorgeschwader heavy fighter wings and their replacement, single engine Sturmgruppen of heavily armed FW 190 AS, clearing each force of bomber destroyers in their turn from Germany's skies throughout most of 1944. As part of this game changing strategy, especially after the bombers had hit their targets, the Asaf's fighters were then free to strafe German airfields and transport while returning to base contributing significantly to the achievement of air superiority by Allied air forces over Europe. On March 27, 1944, the Combined Chiefs of Staff issued orders granting control of all the Allied air forces in Europe, including strategic bombers, to General Dwight D. Eisenhower, the Supreme Allied Commander, who delegated command to his deputy and chief air chief Marshal Arthur Tedder. There was resistance to this order from some senior figures, including Winston Churchill, Harris, and Karl Spatz, but after some debate, control passed to Schaeff on April 1, 1944. When the combined bomber offensive officially ended on 1 April, Allied airmen were well on the way to achieving air superiority over all of Europe. While they continued some strategic bombing, the Asaf along with the RAF turned their attention to the tactical air battle in support of the Normandy invasion. It was not until the middle of September that the strategic bombing campaign of Germany again became the priority for the Asaf. The twin campaigns, the Asaf by day, the RAF by night, built up into massive bombing of German industrial areas, notably the Ruhr, followed by attacks directly on cities such as Hamburg, Kassel, Pforzheim, Mainz and the often criticized bombing of Dresden. 